In the previous video, I showed how to download and install Derby. In this video, I'm going to show you how to verify that your installation is set up correctly. I'm going to go over again how to set up your first SQL database, and I'm going to review some of the basic SQL commands used in populating the data, putting the data into that SQL database. To begin, I've opened up a command prompt here. What you can do to check that the appropriate environment variables have been set is to type into your command prompt echo and then percentage sign the name of the particular environment variable you might want to check. For example, I could ch check java underscore home, put another closing percentage sign at the end, and then hit enter and check. Now, java home should be set to the path where your java jdk is located. So mine is in C program files java jdk-20. You might have a different number if you're using a different version of Java. Now, in order to run Derby, we also need to check our Derby home. And the Derby home should be inside of the same file path, except it's going to be within a backslash DB folder within your JDK. Now, another thing that we should check is the class path. So echo percent, all one word this time, no underscore, percentage at the beginning and the end and then class path right here. And again, there might be some differences for your class path. This is what mine looks like, and this is a correct setup. Now, if any of these things are not set, you either need to go into your environment variables and create the variable and its value as well, or you need to go into your derby folder, the subfolder bin, and run the set embedded cp.bat file. So I'm going to show you uh, those steps now. To set up your environment variables, go down to your search bar, start to type in the word environment, should pop up as edit system environment variables. Click on that. Go down to the bottom, click environment variables. And then in the bottom, system variables, and then click new. Now I've already got the class path set up right there. I've got Derby home set up right there. And I've got Java home set up right there. So I should be all set. You may or may not also need to set up module path. And to, to set these up, you would click new and then type in your variable name, such as Java underscore home. And then you can either type in the path to your Java home, or you can click browse directory and browse to that location on your hard drive. Mine would be under this PC and then program files and then Java and then JDK. And then I would press OK. I'm just going to click cancel because I've already done that. The other thing that you can do is you can run set embedded cp.bat from within the derby bin folder. And that will also show you what your path variables need to be. There's a few different ways to do that. Uh, one is to simply start typing out the path on the command prompt. So mine would be under the C drive, program files, Java, DB, nope, JDK, backslash JDK, db bin and then backslash set embedded cp and then press tab one more time to make sure you have the dot bat version running hit enter uh, and it will set the derby home variable now it's actually appending to the class path so my class path uh, was originally about half this long and it appended onto it so i didn't really need to run this but you if you didn't have your class path set then you would have needed to run this and then module path as well. So that one actually is probably necessary. I should have said that earlier. But this shows you what it should look like. You know, what are those values that you should have by running that set embedded cp.bat. A slightly easier way, perhaps, uh, instead of typing that all out, is you can just navigate to uh, a folder here. Let's just, just get a new folder and then go to uh, this PC, C drive, program files, Java, JDK, db bin and then set where is it set embedded cp.bat and what you can do is you can drag and drop it onto your command prompt there and then hit enter and it'll run it all right and once that's all set up we should be able to then uh, go to our derby command prompt and set up our derby database this is the folder where i've got my sql file it's named books.sql it comes from this book shown on the screen right here 
So I first need to put my command prompt into this folder right here. There's a few different ways to do that, to navigate to that folder. I'm just going to type in CD and then a space, and then drag and drop the folder name, paste the path into my command prompt, and hit Enter. Now I am inside of that folder. I can use DIR to check and see there are the files in that folder. Next step is to connect to the Derby command prompt. This is the command that I want to run. I keep a document of all the common Derby commands I need because, I don't know, I don't like to memorize them. So this is the one that I need to run right here. And it should be the same for you. So I'm going to paste that in and hit enter. My command prompt changes to show the IJ right here. And then I'm going to copy in this command right here. Paste that in. This means that I'm going to connect to the database JDBC Derby Books. Books is going to be the name of the database. If you would like to name your database something else, you will need to change this word. It's the first time I'm connecting. So I'm going to put create equals true. We're going to create the database. We're going to use these usernames and passwords because those are suggested by the Java book that I'm following. So I hit enter. Nothing appears to happen in the command prompt, but in that folder window, we can see that a books folder has been created and a derby.log. You shouldn't ever really need to mess with either of these. Uh, potentially, you might need to read the log to see if there's error messages there. Now, our database has been created, but there's no data inside of it yet. To put the data inside of it, we need to run some SQL commands. Those SQL commands are going to be found inside books.sql. I'm going to go ahead and open it up with uh, Notepad++. So this is a glimpse as to what it looks like, and I'm going to go through some details of these SQL commands. But the brief version is that we're going to create three tables, uh, author ISBN, titles, and authors. I've got a particular color scheme here. If you go to settings and then style configurator, I use uh, deep black right here. It's a high contrast uh, color setting. I like that. Uh, it's easy to read for me. And I also increase the font size and use global font size. But you can use any text editor you want. To run that file, I'm going to type in run single quote or apostrophe, the name of the file, books.sql, SQL, closing, Quote it, closing apostrophe, semicolon, hit enter. And it just scrolled through and just executed all those commands, and the database is now populated. I can do a brief little check by running a particular SQL command, select all from the authors table, semicolon, and hit enter. And we can see our authors right here. All right, our SQL database is all set up. To get out of the Derby command prompt, we type in disconnect, semicolon, exit, semicolon, and then hit enter. And now I'm going to go through the SQL commands in a little bit more detail, in a significant amount more detail, in that books.sql file. First, there are three drop table commands. The very first time you run this, those are actually going to produce errors because there's no tables to drop. These are basically deletion commands. But the second time you run this, this is going to be really useful because essentially it's going to help reset your database back to the initial conditions specified in this file. So drop table and then the name of each table. SQL databases are organized into tables. You can think of each table basically as a separate Excel sheet. So like if you had an Excel uh, document with multiple different sheets, you could think of each of those as a separate table. Here I create one of the tables, the one named authors. And this table is going to have three different uh, columns in it. So three different column names are given. The author ID is one, first name is the second, last name is the third. Author ID is going to contain integer data. First name is going to contain varchar parentheses 20, which is, if you're thinking in terms of Java, just think of it as a string. It's really closer to a character array of length 20. Last name, character array of length 30. And there's some other tags on this, such as not null. We are not allowed to insert a row of data into this table without specifying the author ID. Same with the first name, same with the last name. Now, the author ID, we're actually not going to specify when we insert data in because it's going to be generated as the identity. So the SQL is going to generate the author ID and make sure it's unique for us. Most tables in a SQL database are going to have a unique column a column with unique values. And that's going to be referred to as the primary key of that table. So the primary key for the author's table is going to be the author ID. At this point, I should also note capitalization actually doesn't matter in SQL. SQL is case insensitive. It does not care about your capitalization. Now, there are conventions, and the convention is to capitalize the SQL keywords, such as drop, create, 
table, not, null, int, identity, etc., etc. Next create table command is going to create a table named titles. It's going to have four columns in it. Varchar 20, so it's a character array of length 20, character array of length 100, integer, character array of length 4 for the uh, copyright year. That's what's just going to be four digits there. They could have probably made it an integer, but they decided to make it a uh, uh, character array. All of these are going to be not null. The primary key is going to be the ISBN. This database is containing information about books, and the ISBN is a unique identifier for books. It's a unique identifier that is created outside of the database. The SQL is not going to just invent a number for it, right? That's going to be specified from the outside. Finally, there's a third table, uh, the author ISBN table. This is a table that is going to be used to connect the information in the author's table to the information in the titles table, or what I think of as the books table right here. Scrolling up to the authors table again. Every author should be listed exactly once in the author table. No more than once. We're not going to duplicate any authors in this table. Every single row has a unique author, but authors might have the same first and last name. So we use the author ID to distinguish between them. Books, or we're going to call this table titles, may have uh, the same title as some other book. Titles can actually not be copyrighted. So different books could have the same title, so we'll distinguish between them using the ISBN. Every single unique book is going to be listed at most once in the titles table, and hopefully exactly once. The author ISBN table is going to be used to connect the various books with the various authors because a book might have more than one author, or an author might have written more than one book. So we have this one-to-many relationship between authors and books, but also between books and authors. So the author ISBN table is going to help express that relationship. It only has two columns, one column for the author ID and one column for the book ISBN. So if we have a particular book that has two authors, say, then the ISBN for that book will appear twice, once associated with the first author's author ID, and then once associated with the second author's author ID. If we have an author who has written, say, three books, then that author will appear three times, sorry, that author's author ID will appear three times in this table once for each of their books, once associated with each of those different ISBNs. The author ISBN table does not have a primary key. It just has two foreign keys. A foreign key is essentially a value that's going to be a primary key in a different table. It's a way of connecting information between tables. So this line of SQL expresses that there's a foreign key, author ID, our, our table's value, author ID, is related to, it's referencing in the author's table, the column also named author ID. Now we could have it referencing a, a column with a different name, right? The names don't have to be the same. That's why they're listed twice here. In this table, author ISBN, the column named author ID references or matches up with the author ID in a different table, the author's table. Same thing, ISBN in this table is a foreign key. It's connected to a primary key in the titles table. That primary key in the titles table also happens to be named ISBN, although we could name it something different. Finally, insert into commands. How do we actually put the data into these tables we've created? And you can insert multiple rows at a time. Here, five different rows are going to be inserted. And by the way, the indentation does not make any difference here. The white space is purely for the benefit of the human reader. So we're going to insert into which table, the author's table. Which columns are we going to insert into? These two columns, because the author ID is generated automatically uh, as a unique primary key. And what are the values that are going to be inserted? Those values are going to be grouped inside of pairs of parentheses. And the string values are going to be denoted with apostrophes or single quotes to identify that they are strings. I said before, and I'll say it again, the capitalization does not matter in any of the SQL commands or the names of the tables or the names of the columns. Of course, it does matter in the values themselves. If I lowercased you know, this P here, then a lowercase Paul would be inserted into the database as opposed to an uppercase Paul but none of the SQL commands or the names of the tables or the columns, uh, they don't care about capitalization.
All right, here's a bigger insert into, into the titles table, uh, and there's a whole bunch of values. I'm just gonna scroll past all of those. And then there's a long insert into, into the author ISBN table. Only two columns needed associating author number one with this ISBN. But author number one is also associated with this other book that they have, uh, were an author on. And look, when I click here, these three ISBNs are duplicated because this book had three co-authors, authors with ID one, two, and three. And if I scroll down, that's it. It's just that insert, and then that wraps up our SQL document. At this point, our data is all set up. It's populated with data. And now we are going to, in the next video, look at how to write Java code to interact with this database and also run SQL commands against it, select queries to access the data in our database, and also how to modify or insert new data into the database.